minute to introduce our next speakers coming from Pop, as well as Mascaro Construction. So I would like to introduce Richard Barkowski, the executive director of at uh, oh, sorry, I lost my word. Executive discretion director at Cop, huh. and Ali Tornick, the HR generalist at Mascaro Construction. So with that, I'll pass it right over to you two. Thank you very much. It's great uh, to be here. Sound is okay. You can hear me. Yep, can hear you perfectly. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, I'm the executive director of Constructors Association. Uh, we're a trade association of highway contractors, highway heavy, basically construction that is in a horizontal. So roads, bridges, lots of dams, airport runways, um, utilities. Um, and uh, I'm joined here by Allie and she, she'll get into more specifics. Um, as I said, we're a trade association. Mascaro is one of our, our members, um, so they perform the work. We help uh, our members in the areas of uh, workforce development. Um, and what we've uh, created is, um, and I think there was a slide, uh, the next slide. Um, but what we have created is uh, a website, and what it's called is Future Road Builders. Um, it's futureroadbuilders.com. And basically, it's an interactive uh, website that includes um, mini games that are free to download that just educate people about careers in highway and heavy construction. Um, there's basically, I would, I would categorize them into, into two um, sections. Uh, one is the actual men and women who are out there out on the roads and on the bridges um, performing the construction work. So that includes carpenters, um, people who finish concrete, laborers, uh, heavy equipment operators, operating engineers. Um, but then uh, the other section would be um, people who are civil engineers, um, estimators, people who estimate with different agencies to get the work, safety professionals, project managers. Um, so there's sort of two tiers of what we're trying to attract to the construction industry. Um, from the standpoint of the crafts, that is a true apprenticeship program. Um, going back to apprenticeship programs before they were cool, uh, now you hear a lot about apprenticeship programs, but um, ours go back to the 1960s. And basically the concept is, you know, if you're gonna operate a heavy equipment, piece of heavy equipment like a crane, um, you're not gonna know how to do that day one. So it is uh, an earn while you learn apprenticeship program, usually about four years, where you, you receive training at a training site, but you also go out and work. Um, one of the advantages of that is you're obviously uh, receiving a paycheck right away. There's no uh, college debt or anything like that. Um, so this is just uh, the Future Road Builders, just a part of the Future Road Builders uh, website. And now I'm going to turn it over to Allie, and she's going to get into more details, specifically of talking about the career path in the construction industry, and then how her company um, utilizes that career path to plug young people. Thank you so much, Rich. I'm very excited to be here. Um, a little bit about Mascaro Construction, as uh, Rich said already, but we are a, a general contractor in the city of Pittsburgh. Although our roots are firmly planted with this city, a large majority of our work does take place within a six hour radius, which really uh, encourages us in the human resources space to ensure that we've got the right type of talent at all levels within the industry. Um, one of my big responsibilities within the human resources space as a generalist is supporting our workforce development initiatives. And that does sync up quite nicely with one of my responsibilities in leading our recruiting efforts. From a workforce development standpoint, one of the things that we're seeing across the industry, not just specific to Mascaro, is that there is such a need for early career individuals to really start sincerely and seriously considering a long-term career in the industry. You know, gone are the days where going to college after high school is your only career path. So we're really working hard to get in front of students at all ages, even as early as fourth grade, to educate them about the opportunities for long and successful and lucrative careers within the industry, regardless of where you are and what your particular interests may be. So 
So Rich's talked on some really great things here about apprenticeship programs and pre-apprenticeship programs. And as we are signatory with the unions, um, we really love to advertise that that's a great opportunity for students really just starting to consider a career in construction, whether they've been um, raised in a family that has exposure or a connection to the industry or have always been um, those type of students that love to play with blocks and, and Lincoln logs and tinker around with things or even play outside in the dirt. Those are all really good indicators of someone who could be really quite successful within the industry. So as we think about this career path, I think that um, a lot of people think that the only opportunity to work in construction is being out on the field. So as Rich talked about, there are so many opportunities. Now from a high school standpoint, there are plenty of pre-apprenticeship programs and Mascara works very closely with a lot of local high schools, um, whether they are CTCs um, or just local schools close by to Mascara construction. Um, so we definitely encourage individuals to work through those pre-apprenticeship programs, get that early exposure to the industry to find out if that's something you want. Those students that find a real knack for um, pre-apprenticeship programs or going straight into an apprenticeship program, a trade, if you will, or a union, um, are those ones that really enjoy working with their hands, don't want to sit behind a desk all day. And it's just so great that we get that opportunity to speak to students and say, what great limitless opportunities there are for you to get a head start on your career. So you're all doing great things by participating in something like this. So the pre-apprenticeship programs, apprenticeship programs, that's a great funnel of talent to come into the industry, learn what it is to be on an active construction site. And there are many people that work their way up in unions as well. They start off as an apprentice, they go up to a journeyman, up to a foreman um, and a, a superintendent. There's great opportunities if you want to stay within a union trade. Um, if you find that maybe, okay, maybe I'd like to try something else or work my way into a different set of skills, maybe it's management, maybe it's estimating, maybe it's being a project engineer or project manager. As you can see here, no matter where you are in your life or what your interests are, you can really um, escalate upward on this wonderful trajectory within the construction industry. Um, I know a lot of people might assume construction was a little more rough, a little more tumble, and you've got to have grit to be in it for sure, but there are awesome opportunities. So when you think about, you know, if you decided that you wanted to go into a college or a university, um, earn a two or four year degree, we offer internships and co-ops for students outside of high school. So on that college track that are you know, maybe studying civil engineering, that's our big line of um, funneling the talent into our industry here is civil engineering. I was um, I just got back from Penn State recruiting for uh, a career fair, so it's always at the, the top of my mind for things like that. But, you know, we don't only take students studying civil engineering if you're interested in construction management. And I'll be honest, for people that are interested in construction have landscaping experience, there are a lot of really wonderful transferable skills that I wish more high school students gave themselves credit for. So if you think, oh, well, I just helped my neighbor with a landscaping company cutting grass or stacking bricks for retaining walls, how's that going to help you be a project engineer? You're selling yourself short. Those transferable skills with the things you're doing in high school matter. It shows a recruiter or an employer that you have what it takes to work outside, early hours, smart, you like building things, and you have to have a high level of customer service. So we really encourage you to maximize on your time in high school if they offer work release programs where, you know, maybe you do your classes in the morning and then get to you know, do some work release programs, landscaping, a customer service job, or shadowing somebody in the construction industry. Ask. If you don't see something advertised, find a company. Ask them. And even if you're not sure that you want to go into a trade or if you want to you know, be an engineer in the construction industry, we're a mid-sized general contractor. We've got other support departments that have a knack for this industry and the people in it. So human resources, all good companies should have a human resources department. If they don't, they should. <laughs> so outside
outside of human resources, accounting, finance, a general counsel, marketing, and even IT. So when you're thinking about your career opportunities and what that looks like, not all of our positions do require a college degree, and not all of them require that similar experience um, that's relatable to the construction industry. We're really just looking for a great attitude, a great outlook, and an enthusiasm for the energy the industry. So you could see you can do a pre-apprenticeship program, join an apprenticeship program, decide that later down the road maybe you want to go back to college and earn an associate's degree or a college degree, four-year degree in civil engineering or design, uh, and be on your way to be an owner, a president, or a, a CEO of a company. Um, we're very fortunate with our leadership that they've all worked in different capacities within mass sterile construction so they know firsthand what it takes to run a construction project, be on a job site, and mold and develop the talent that we see as the future of our organization. Um, and outside, again, of those specific on-the-job field opportunities, you can see that we've got some of those more support positions. So um, uh, in the office, supporting them on a more administrative role, recruiting, um, and some maybe less common career opportunities that aren't talked about in schools are being a surveyor or working in construction management. So it's really an exciting uh, industry, an exciting opportunity, and whether you've had first-hand exposure to it or not, check out those opportunities. If they're listed on Tallow, ask your guidance counselor, Google, um, or as always, please feel free to reach out to myself and Rich. We both love this industry so much. We're so passionate about it. And we'll drop anything that we're doing to talk to people and really kind of support you and show that it really is a choose your own adventure. Wherever you are in your life, whatever your interests are, there's a lot of booming growth within the industry and we'd love more people to consider it. So strongly encourage you to look for any opportunity to get exposure in a fast paced and innovative industry like construction. Thank you so much for that really robust overview of everything that is offered with the apprenticeships and everything that you can do within construction. I do have definitely spiked some interest because we actually have some questions. I know we're a little over time, but Hallow's talking next, so we kind of have some control over that. Would you be able to answer a couple questions from the attendees tonight? Sure, I'll, okay. I'll take a shot at it. Um, so um, the inspector question, inspectors basically are the men and women who inspect the work that's being done. Um, so they're actually out on the projects, um, inspecting concrete, inspecting steel, um, all, all the various materials that go to construction. Uh, but as Ali mentioned, there is all the behind the scenes, uh, like any business um, that involves the accounting, um, and then obviously knowing how to build things, and knowing how to engineer uh, to build things what if you don't know anything about construction? That's really why, you know, Ali touched on it when you saw that slide. There's a pre-apprenticeship that can help you get uh, prepared to become an apprentice. Um, but not knowing uh, a lot about construction should not limit you uh, in seeking the industry. It really is one of the few industries where you can get in early and, and make a difference very quickly. Um, how many apprenticeships do you, uh, apprentices do you hire uh, a year? Um, probably we represent the highway construction industry, but if I take all construction industry in Western Pennsylvania, it's probably 500 um, apprentices a year in the various uh, trades. Um, and we're not the only ones that have apprenticeships, apprenticeships or construction apprenticeships or throughout the United States. One of the things that Ali mentioned um, you know, people, uh, especially young people, they think, well, is it college or is it, um, or can I go in the trades? You really can do both. Uh, all our apprenticeship programs um, get credit uh, for local community colleges. So then if you come out of that and you want to go into construction management or project management, you can certainly do that. So. Things are peaking a lot of interest. I saw like a face reaction pop up on the so I think we may have time for like one or two more. 
I know there's a lot in there um, before we pass it off. So if you want to go ahead and pick whichever you're most comfortable with. Sure. Okay. Um, do you have to have a college degree to go into construction? Absolutely not. Um, one, of the, one of the neat things I, I like to see is with, uh, especially people who operate heavy equipment, when I go out to talk to them when they're uh, their first year apprentice, their first day, um, they all have uh, big pickup trucks that, they're off, uh, that they've bought because they're not just paying for college, they're actually being paid to be on the job. Um, so no, you do not need a college uh, degree. If you want one, you can incorporate it. And then a union, a union, a craft, and from the standpoint of craft union, that would be something like carpenters union, um, laborers union, people who operate heavy equipment. E each of those talents has a particular, um, a particular need. Well, thank you so much. I know sure. there's still a lot of questions, but for the sake of time, tragically, I think we do have to cut it off. Um, but thank you again, both Rich and Ali, for sharing so much valuable information with all of the attendees today. We really appreciate you coming and talking to us. Thank you so much. We appreciate the opportunity.